Hello, today we're going to take a look at some general problem solving techniques. Uh, for this lesson, you're going to want to use the note sheet that you received from me to kind of guide you through the problems that we're going to do so you don't have to write quite as much. You're also going to want a calculator and, of course, something to write with. The key to story problems is to not fear them. We can attack any story problem if we have an okay plan as to how we're going to go about it. Many times plans might include drawing a picture, especially if it's a visual or geometric sort of story problem. You may write a verbal model, so writing it out in words, you know, abbreviated, what happens and how are things calculated. Starting with a verbal model is very useful. Then you can convert that verbal model to an algebraic model if you need to. This is where you include variables in the equation. And last but not least, no matter what kind of model or plan we make, our, our job is to go ahead and solve that. So make sure that we're answering the question and checking our solutions. We're going to take a look at a few different types of story problems today and different ways that you can attack them. Let's start here with our first example. We're going to use a formula. Many times story problems can be solved using a formula that we may have already learned about. Here we have a high-speed train. It's traveling between Boston and Washington, a distance of 457 miles. A trip takes 6.5 hours. What is its average speed? So if you think back to what you may already know, you've learned about a formula that you can use to calculate distance traveled. Distance equals rate times time. And if we remember this formula, we can use it in this situation. We can plug in 457 for the distance, 6.5 hours for the time, and go ahead and solve that equation. This is 457 equals R times 6.5. So if we divide both sides by 6.5 to solve for R, we find out that our answer is 70.3. That means the average speed is about 70.3 miles per hour. It was asking us for the rate. Let's take a look at another one similar to that. This one's about a jet, so it's involving aviation. But a jet flies at an average speed of 540 miles per hour. How long will it take to fly from New York to Tokyo, a distance of 6,760 miles? Well, if we do a similar sort of setup using the same formula, since we're talking about speed, distance, rate, time. So we're going to set up distance equals rate times time and plug in what we already know. We know the distance is 6,760 miles. We know the rate is 540, but I don't know the time, so I'm just going to keep t as my variable here. And then once again, to solve for t, I'm going to divide. And if I go ahead and calculate 6,760 divided by 540, we find out that the answer is about 12 and a half hours. Let's take another, a look at another example where we look at a pattern. So this one's a little bit different. A formula, not that very helpful, but taking a look at a pattern in information or in data will help us figure out how to predict what's going to happen. We have a paramotor is a parachute propelled by a fan-like motor. And the table shows the height of this paramotorist t minutes after beginning a descent. So they're going down. Find the height of the paramotorist after seven minutes. If we take a look at this table, there are some important things we should notice. First of all, it appears that at time zero, so this is the very beginning before any descent has started, there was a height of 2,000. This is his initial height. We should also take a look at how the pattern in the table is changing. The thing that would be changing is, of course, time as well as height. This paramotorist is decreasing as he comes down out of the sky, and we want to take a look at how much he's decreasing by. So if we use that information and we look at a pattern, we can see that the height decreases by 250 feet per minute. You can sort of see that when you look at 2,000, 1,750, 1,500. And now if we think about this as a word equation, we have a word equation here where the height of the paramotorist can be calculated by thinking about his initial height and subtracting the rate of descent, so how fast he's going down each minute, times the number of minutes that he's in the air. So if we plug in what we know, height, this is the initial height, 
this is how fast he's descending, and then that's multiplied by t for every minute he's going to descend another 250 feet. So seeing what we have written there, we can now use that equation that we've created to predict a given value. So in this situation, they ask us for after seven minutes. So we can just go ahead and plug in the number seven there where the T is and calculate that. 2,000 subtract 250 times seven leaves us with 250 feet remaining. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, can't I just write the table out to seven and just keep subtracting 250? Sure, I suppose you could do that, but if that number we wanted to predict was 17 minutes or 70 minutes or 70 years or things like that in a real life situation, oftentimes writing the table out or continuing the table is not an efficient strategy. It'll actually take longer. So if we take a look at patterns, it helps, speeds up, it helps us speed up the process. Let's look at another example where we need to draw a diagram. So we're going to hang four championship banners on a wall in the gym. The banners are each eight feet wide and the wall is 62 feet long. We want to make it look nice. So there should be an equal amount of space between the ends of the wall and the banner and between each pair of banners. So we're trying to space them out evenly. How far apart should the banners be placed? This is a very visual question. So sometimes you may want to draw a diagram. That's where I would start. If we have 62 feet of space on our wall, you can see that in my diagram here. And we know each banner is eight feet in width. And we know these spaces all have to be the same amount in between the banner. But I just don't know how much those need to be. That's my X. That's what I'm trying to find. Now, if we take a look at our picture, this might help us set up an equation. I can see that I have X feet, eight feet, X feet, eight feet, X feet, eight feet. And as I keep going across my wall, eventually these things all need to add up to be 62. So from that diagram, we can write and solve an equation. This is what it might look like. X plus 8 plus X plus 8, and all of those measurements add up to make 62. If we combine like terms and we take a look at what we have, we have 5X plus 32 equals 62. We would subtract the 32. From each side, 5x equals 30. Therefore, when we divide by 5, we find that x is 6. That means that we should space the banners apart 6 feet. Let's try one more example. Back to that table. Back to that uh, looking for a pattern in a table. So this table shows another pair of motors after so many minutes of descent again. We're going to find the height after eight minutes. So our table only goes out to four minutes, and I don't really want to draw more table because that would take too long. Let's do the same strategy we did before. Let's figure out how this thing is descending. How is he going down each minute as he travels down from the sky? So if we take a look at that, we can see he started at 2,400, and it appears he's decreasing by the same amount every time. He looks like he's decreasing by 210 feet every time, every minute that he's descending. So if we use what we know about where he started and how it's changing, we can go from there. Okay, how it started, he started at an initial height of 2,400 feet. He's descending 210 feet for every minute, I'm going to use T for minutes, that he's in the air. If I use this expression, I can calculate the height at any given time. So I'll use what I have right there and go ahead and plug in 8 since it asked us for after 8 minutes. And if I use that equation and I plug in the 8, you can see that we have 720 feet for our answer. Okay, so this concludes some general problem solving techniques. Thank you very much.